Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, hope you all are doing well and staying safe. Um, my name is Evan Warren. I'm a technical engineer uh, for Active Reports, and today we're going to be presenting topics on getting started with Active Reports 14. Along with me today are Martin Fioras, who's the Active Reports product manager, and Tyler Barlock, who is also a technical engagement engineer for Active Reports and spread. So say hello, guys. Hey, everybody. Hello. Awesome. All right, so let's take a look at the agenda today and see what we're going to cover. So first on our list, we're going to go over um, our latest release, which is Active Reports 14.1. So we'll just go give a quick overview of what's new with that and uh, the features that are going to be included in this. Next, we'll cover the installation and configuring of NuGet packages, as well as talk about converting existing um, reports. So that includes, you know, converting old reports into um, Active Reports 14 files, as well as importing reports from other formats to Active Reports files. And then we'll transition into embedding and using the um, Web Designer. So we'll kind of talk about that implementation of how you can um, you know, get it started in your application. And then lastly, we will talk about how you can use that um, report designer to build a report. And then we'll also show you some report delivery options. So this includes, um, you know, different methods of exporting, such as, you know, HTML, um, PDF, and so on and so forth. And then lastly, we'll, we'll wrap things up and we'll have a quick Q&A session at the end just for any questions that you you guys have. Um, also, just one more thing to point out. If you guys do have any questions, feel free to um, submit them in the question question panel in the webinar. Um, we'll be we'll try to answer them as um, we proceed through our presentation. So first, let's talk about the Active Reports 14.1 release. So Mateen, would you like to shed some light on this um, latest release? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Evan. Um, yes, so Active Reports 14.1, which is the first service pack for um, Active Reports 14, was released last week. Um, now, we included some features in it that didn't make into the initial release of Active, Active, Active Reports 14. Um, so these features specifically include uh, .NET Core 3.1 support. So um, as you know, um, Active Reports 14 came out with um, uh, .NET Core support with the initial release of 14. Uh, now with 14.1, uh, we are supporting Netcore uh, 3.1. Um, another feature that we um, released with 14.1 is uh, metadata in PDF exports. Um, so for our European users who rely on or who are required to uh, comply with the Zugfeld um, standards uh, of invoicing, uh, this is this one's for you guys. Um, so you can now attach um, uh, XML. Uh, and uh, text files um, to your PDF exports to sort of to, to comply with these standards. Another uh, feature that we implemented in 14.1, uh, which was one of our customers' uh, requested feature, um, uh, specifically for Excel export. Uh, now they wanted a, um, a property uh, that they could identify which control which uh, uh, which control ends up on which sheet of an Excel workbook. So imagine a report with you know uh, four or five different controls on it you know a chart a sub report a table a tablet and um, an image a logo um, and uh, you want each one of these um, uh, you want to specify which sheet of the workbook each one of these uh, controls ends up on uh, so say for example you want the chart to be on uh, the first sheet and you want the table to show up on the second sheet uh, with the page name property, you can do that. So when your end users export or when you export to um, Excel, um, those controls will end up on those specific uh, sheets that you identify. So that's what this property was for. Uh, the next set of features that we uh, released, uh, you know, in addition to this, was uh, a set of um, new expressions, uh, specifically calculating uh, quarters. Uh, again, this was also a customer requested feature. Um, so there is a, an expression essentially to calculate quarters and then you can uh, give the quarter name. So quarter one or quarter two um, and then the quarter 
uh, essentially would just be the months of the year, the three months of the year. Um, and then uh, on top of these, we also had some minor enhancements uh, to our chart controls, uh, to our designer controls, um, and the engine as well. Um, so 14.1 includes a lot of, um, you know, enhancements, a lot of uh, fixes, a lot of improvements uh, that uh, users will definitely benefit from. So if you haven't already installed 14.1, uh, definitely recommend installing and updating to 14.1. Um, not only will you get these uh, features, uh, but also you would have the, uh, you know, the essential bug fixes that we uh, always include in our um, service packs. Um, so with that, I'll pass it back to you, Evan. Awesome. Thanks, Atian. I'm excited to try out these new features in 14.1. All right. So uh, before we transition to uh, the next topic, I'm going to have I'm gonna ask you guys if you can um, fill out this quick poll for us, just so that we can um, see see where you guys are at with NuGet. If you're familiar with it, or if you haven't used it at all, this will kind of help me, um, you know, steer the presentation. So let me launch this up. If you guys could fill this out, I'll give you guys just a few seconds here. Um, Nice. All right, and I'll close it off. All right, so let's share the results. All right, so it looks like um, you know 40, 44% of us um, have currently used it in our project and are familiar with NuGet. Um, you know, 24% have used it in the past, and then 32% haven't used it at all. So this is a good um, this is a good mix here. So we can um, a lot of this info will be new to that 32%, and some of this will might be a refresher. But it's you know um, this is great. Thanks for filling this out for us. All right. So now with that, let's go into uh, NuGet packages. So. So actor reports packages are now available through NuGet. So for, for those of you that don't know what NuGet is, NuGet is the package manager for .NET. So the NuGet client tools provide the ability to produce and consume packages. And then the NuGet gallery is the central package repository used by all the package authors and consumers. So we made this transition to NuGet to simplify your installation and development experience while using actor reports. So one of the benefits of this transition is that uh, you have access to the latest builds and hotfixes. So instead of uh, using installers and you know reaching out to you know sales or our support team for these installers, we publish our hotfixes and builds to NuGet. So you know you developers can update your your packages you know quickly and efficiently, so you can get back to your development work. Uh, another benefit of using NuGet packages is working with .NET Core. So like my team said, uh, we now support .NET Core 3.1, and this allows you to add um, more capabilities for designing and previewing your reports in .NET Core applications. And then lastly, you can manage your dependencies based on the location of your packages. So if you would like to pull your packages from an online source, such as NuGet, you can pull them publicly. Or if you know you're limited um, to how you can pull the packages, so if you don't have access to the internet, you can pull the packages locally from your machine. So if we are going to pull them from NuGet, you can. Um, there's two ways you can obtain these packages from NuGet. So you can pull them directly from NuGet's website, which I'll show you here real quick. This contains um, all the packages, um, all the Grape City Active Reports packages um, here on NuGet. So you can access them there. And then let's head back here. And then you can also access the packages through the NuGet Package Manager in Visual Studio. So there's many ways to, ac to access this Package Manager in Visual Studio. But one of the most common ways is just by going to the Tools menu, NuGet Package Manager, 
and then selecting Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. So when you add a package, a set of core engine assemblies are added to the application. So I'll I'll go um, I'll explain this a little bit more once we do once we dive into the demo portion. But just be aware of some of these features when you um, are installing packages from a public source. So the other option that you can choose is installing them from a local source. So Active Reports packages are also available on your local machine when you install Active Reports 14. So when they're installed, the local packages will be installed in this NuGet folder within your program files 86 directory. And for accessing these packages, it's very simple. So you would just have to configure your package source in your NuGet package manager to point to this directory instead of the online website and install the packages uh, from the manager. So here's the uh, preview of the NuGet Package Manager in Visual Studio 2019. So if we switch gears a little bit and talk about converting reports, um, Active Reports allows you to upgrade your existing reports from previous versions. So you can, so the versions that you can convert are version one, two, three, six, and then version seven to 13. And this is all done by using the Active Reports file converter. So this tool is integrated in Visual Studio when you install Active Reports 14, regardless if you have the standard edition or the professional edition. So this converter is, accommodates both editions. This tool will also search your application for any old report files and ask if you would like to update these files. Another useful tool is the importing importing tool that we have. So this import tool allows you to import other report files to active report files. So the formats that we that we support are Crystal Reports, Microsoft Access, Microsoft Excel, and Active Reports. So to clarify on that last bullet, um, when we say active reports and then RPX in parentheses, that's referring to our section report template. And what that means is that you can convert your section report templates to one of our other active reports templates, say an RDL or page report. So if you want to um, eventually transition from section report to RDL or page, you can do so using this import tool. So here are some uh, resources for, um, for NuGet packages, as well as converting your reports. Um, we'll provide these uh, resources to you as well after um, after the webinar, just so you can um, take a look at it and dive in um, dive into them a little bit more. But for right now, let's jump into the demo portion and show you how to work with NuGet and convert your reports. Just give me one moment here while I set this up. All right. So let's start from scratch. So right now I have Visual Studio open, Visual Studio 2019. And I am working in an ASP.NET Core MVC application that's using um, our JS Viewer component. So if we look over here in um, our Solution Explorer and we look under the, the dependencies and packages, you'll see that we already have some packages installed. We'll, we have some Microsoft packages as well as some system packages as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to add um, um, an ASP.NET Core um, viewer package for active reports. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Tools, go to NuGet Package Manager, and then Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. And this will bring up the NuGet, uh, NuGet Manage Packager. So if we look over here on the left-hand side, we have three tabs. We have Browse. This will allow you to browse all of the packages in that specified package source we have installed. This will tell you which packages are installed in your solution at the moment. So as you can see here, these are the packages um, that we have installed. And then we have an updates tab. So out of the installed packages, if any of those need to be updated, there will be a notification here. 
And then next, if we go over here to the right-hand side, you'll see that we have uh, package source with a dropdown, and it will allow you to see all the package sources here. And then if we select this gear, this will bring up our um, bring up all the package sources in the manager at the moment. So right now we have three. So these two um, these two are should be included in your Visual Studio 2019 by default. So this package source right here, nudit.org, this is what's um, pulling the packages from the Nudit website itself. So if you don't have um, this package source set up, just use the following um, source highlighted here below to connect yourself to that public Nougat source. And then down below, I set up a local, um, I set up just a local package source pulling uh, packages from that Nougat directory that I mentioned here. So to simply add a source, you just click plus and then change the name and then update the location. It would either be a URL or you know a directory path and then select update and then you would select okay. All right, so that's how you would manage and add your public and local sources to the package manager. So now let's browse um, Nougat for that um, ASP.NET Core viewer package. So here's the package we need. So I'm gonna select this and we are going to select the latest stable version, which is 14.12117. And I'm gonna select the project, which is JSViewer underscore MVC core. And I'm gonna select install. So we have this license acceptance pop-up here. I'm going to accept that. And then if you see down below, you'll see that the packages, the package will begin installing. And once it's finished installing, we look back over here in the Solution Explorer, you'll see that the package is now added. And if we expand, expand this, you'll now see all the dependencies for that package as well. So if we scroll all the way down in this package, you'll eventually see the gravecity.actorreports.asp.net core viewer.dll in this package. So that's just a quick and easy way to install a NuGet package into your application. So next, let's talk about how you can convert old reports into Actor Reports 14. So here, I just have a simple um, WinForms application. Um, I've added, in my Solution Explorer, I added um, a folder that contains a bunch of old reports. So I have a few AR11 reports, and then an AR9 report. So what I'm gonna do here is go up to tools, select convert to active reports 14. You'll see that it gives me this pop-up saying the list of the files are going to be affected by this upgrade. So we have the AR11 report, AR9, and then this RDL report in here as well. So I'm gonna select okay. The converter is gonna convert those report files for me. It's gonna take a second here just to convert these report files as well as the project. But once that finishes, this will go away. The reports will update and we'll take a close look at how, of how these reports have changed in Active Reports 14. All right, so now we're ready to go. We'll select this report. So let's open this up. You'll now see that we can open this report in Actor Reports 14. Instead of having the toolbox for Actor Reports 11, we now can utilize the tools for Actor Reports 14 here on the side. And the same goes with AR9. So if we open this AR9 report, we'll now be able to use the Actor Reports 14 controls for this report as well. So that's just a quick, um, easy way to uh, convert your reports 
um, two actor reports 14. So let's head back to the presentation and segue to the next topic, which is embedding the pro designer in the web. So Mateen, would you uh, like to discuss this? Yeah, sure. Thanks, uh, Evan. Um, okay, so as Evan mentioned, um, Active Reports 14 um, essentially came up with uh, came up with um, the resources, the assemblies, and all of the other resources that we generally installed with um, our installer. Um, all of those have now been placed um, online. Uh, so for you as developers, it's a lot more, it's a lot easier um, than you know requesting installers from support for every hotfix, for every uh, for every um, um, uh, service pack release. Um, so these the enhancements of these these uh, things that we've done, they, they make your uh, work a lot easier. So um, assemblies, as uh, Evan mentioned, they've been placed on uh, NuGet. Our samples uh, that again they generally get installed uh, with Active Reports prior to Active Reports 14. Um, they are now uh, placed on GitHub, um, and all of the previous samples that we've had are also on GitHub. Um, so there's a lot more samples that you have access to, and so now you can go to get to this GitHub page and, and grab the sample that you're interested in, um, and pull it and just you know study it and learn from that. Um, as well as uh, the JS and CSS files, they have now been placed on npm. So again, you can easily grab these files. Um, embed these controls, the pro designer for web, which is the um, uh, web-based end user report designer that we'll discuss, um, that I'll show in just a minute. Um, so you can uh, grab those files uh, and uh, embed the designer in your application, in your web application, um, or the JS viewer that um, Evan uh, showed earlier. Um, so let's go ahead and get into uh, the um, demo. So uh, let me go ahead and take control and I will share my screen. <laughs> okay, so now you should have uh, my Visual Studio uh, open in front of you. Uh, so uh, what I've done is essentially just created a um, basic uh, .NET Core uh, 3.1 MVC application. Um, so it is a web application, obviously. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is embed in this application the uh, web-based report designer. Um, so as Evan mentioned before, just uh, like embedding the JS viewer, the first thing we're going to do is uh, open up the NuGet uh, package manager. And we're going to bring in the assemblies that we need uh, for um, the web-based designer. So we're going to bring in the ASP.NET Core designer uh, package, and we're going to install that. And it's going to pop up the license. We're going to accept. And on top of this, we're going to install another uh, package from Microsoft, the static files package. Uh, so let's go ahead and install that as well. And again, the license pop-up. So we'll accept that, and um, these uh, packages are now installed in our dependencies uh, folder. Uh, let's go ahead and close this up. The next thing we're going to do is go down to the package manager console, and we're going to um, uh, do an npm install and bring in those uh, JS and CSS files. Uh, for the designer. So uh, we'll just do an npm install at uh, install great city properly. They are designer. So that should install all of the assemblies or rather the packages that we're going to need. So let's take a look just to make sure that they are there and we didn't get. Yep. So we see the node, mo node modules at great city. Uh, and we see under the distribution folder all of the packages or the files that we're going to be able uh, to use to embed this um, web-based designer. Now, the, this web-based designer is um, customizable, uh, meaning that you can install a bare-bones designer, uh, giving your end users the ability to create their own applications. No, sorry, not applications, but create their own reports or modify existing reports. Um, and uh, you can also enhance it 
to give other functionality. For example, we have uh, a data source and a data set picker. Uh, so you can allow your end users to um, you know, play with da data sources and data sets. And obviously you would have access, you would, you would have control over which one of your users have access to which data sets. Um, that would have to be obviously you know, done on your side. Uh, but the uh, option is there. So you can either choose to hide or show these data source and data set pickers, uh, 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 UI controls or UI features. Uh, there's a file menu where you can, um, you know, if you wanted to have a specific region or an area where your uh, end users files reports are stored. Um, and when they go to the file open menu, then they will have all of those report files listed for them. Um, those are some of the features that you can uh, implement um, and include in the web-based, excuse me, report designer. But today we're only going to be doing the uh, basic uh, end user report designer. Uh, so for that purpose, we're only going to use this vendor folder, uh, the um, base server APIs, the web designer CSS and JS files. These are the basic files that you need for all for any type of web designer uh, that you would embed in your application. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and copy and paste them into the www root folder. Uh, so all of those uh, files are now there. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do um, is we're going to, let me collapse these, we're going to modify our startup.css. Uh, now in our startup.css, I have a resource, a directory uh, that, that we're referencing this resources folder, which I have not created yet. So let's go ahead and add uh, this folder. Um, and the reason uh, why we're doing this is that this is where you would place uh, essentially your um, report file, right? Uh, your report files or your themes or your logos, whatever it may be, you can place all of these in, these, uh, in this resources file, uh, directory rather. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do in this uh, startup class um, is we're going to add uh, the web designer services. Uh, so uh, under uh, configure services, uh, we're going to add services. If I spell that right, services dot uh, add designer. All right, and obviously I'm going to have to reference that um, DLL. Um, okay, so that's that's done. Then the next thing that we need to get done is um, create some uh, middleware for uh, these uh, applications for uh, essentially the the, um, uh, the web designer to be run on the client. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to uh, copy some code here so I don't make a mistake in typing this out. I'm just copy, I'm gonna copy some code and in the configure method, uh, we're going to add these pieces of code. So the first line essentially just references this resource folder that we created. Um, and then uh, the second file, essentially the second line, basically all it does is again, the middleware for uh, using uh, default files, the static files is already uh, included uh, here. <clears throat> so that's basically it. So let's go ahead and save this startup class um, and let's go to the WW root folder and we're going to add a um, new item. We're gonna add an HTML file, an HTML page, and name it, obviously, index. So let me get rid of that. Um, and again, uh, for simplicity's sake, and because I don't want to type in uh, 30 plus lines of code, I'm going to just cut and paste uh, some code here. Um, so going over, uh, this file, just like any other HTML page, we have um, the style sheets uh, references. Uh, specifically, we're referencing the webdesigner.css uh, here as well. So we need that reference. Um, and then in the body, we have all the JS references. So the uh, jQuery uh, and the bootstrap. Um, and then for the web designer, we need these two references for the base service server API um, and the web designer uh, .js as well. 
Um, so that's basically it. Now, um, the next part is where we're configuring the, um, uh, the web designer itself. Uh, so the first thing is we're creating a designer options uh, variable. Um, and that basically is uh, what, what that essentially is going to be used for is say that you want to um, add all of those plugins that I mentioned earlier uh, that are included in, um, uh, in, in, in this uh, package, uh, in the NPM package. So say you wanted to include a data set and data source uh, you know, option for your end users, or say you wanted to include that file menu for your end users. Um, you would essentially use this designer option. So you would say designer options dot, you know, uh, 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 data set picker, uh, you know, and, and you would uh, add that data set picker or you would uh, use the file, the data designer dot options dot file. Um, uh, and, and, and you would uh, essentially bring in that file menu uh, into your web designer. The, uh, the last, uh, basically the last line here is essentially just rendering the uh, application and bringing in the uh, web designer. That's basically it. Um, so if we go ahead and save this and we run this, so this is probably going to take a minute to build um, and um, start up the application. <clears throat> so Martina, I have a, just a quick question here. Um, yeah. Is the web designer av available for um, both standard and professional editions of actor reports? Uh, good, so that's a good question. Um, that's something that we get a lot from the sale, uh, you know, in, in the sales uh, uh, queue as well, questions. Um, no, so the web designer and all of the end user uh, report designers, they are included in the professional edition of Active Reports. So Active Reports has um, the standard professional editions. Standard is geared more towards, you know, development and developers. Uh, just creating reports and then embedding those reports in their applications. The professional version is for both developers and the end users. So all of the desktop and the web-based um, end user report designers would be included uh, in um, the professional version uh, or edition of active reports. Um, that was a good question. Thanks, Evan. Um, yep. <clears throat> So here uh, we have the application running. Uh, we have the page up and we have the designer um, uh, 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 on, on this page. So very bare bones, basic uh, report designer. Um, you have the, the side panels here that you can uh, collapse and expand and the toolbox, uh, toolbar, toolbox as well that you can collapse and expand and, and grab all the tools from it. Um, so that is basically um, how you embed a, uh, um, uh, a web-based report designer, the Active Reports Pro Designer for Web in your application, uh, .NET Core application. So again, the back end for this is a .NET Core, ASP.NET, uh, uh, .NET Core application, and the front end, um, you know, is, 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 is basically this HTML page. Um, so with that said, um, I will pass it off to um, Tyler, who is essentially going to show us how uh, to use this uh, web-based report designer. Um, and create some applications uh, with, and create some reports rather, uh, with um, this report design. All right, thanks, Patin. Um, so before I kind of get into this part of the presentation, I had a few questions from the earlier webinar, the previous webinar. Um, I kind of just wanted to explain and share some things off before I get into it. Um, we have a knowledge base I would like to mention to everybody um me and evan are working on this knowledge base so if you guys have anything that might not be in the documentation or um might not be as clear in the documentation if you could look in our knowledge base uh, we have a lot of great articles that we've been working hard um and adding a bunch of things for you guys to try to help with any problem solving that you'll need of course you can ask us as well all right so let's get into it <clears throat> minimize this all right, so we're going to look at using the web-based pro designer. So before I kind of go in and demo everything, I want to talk about it a little bit more. Um, Active Reports has two end-user report designers, excluding the Active Reports JS designer. We have the web designer and the desktop designer. Um, all of our designers closely mirror each other on their functionality and their features that they offer. Um, so they're all going to work very similar um, 
And then the Active Reports web designer is based on an HTML5 and JavaScript technology stack. So kind of what my team was going over, this is just a picture of the designer. You know, over here you have your controls, menu button, your ribbon. Um, so your properties, you have an advanced and a basic uh, option for your properties. This is great if you have end users per se that don't really want to get into the advanced options they would kind of just like to change like the font and um, margins and whatnot uh, you know the basic would be good for them if you wanted to do drill downs per se uh, you would change that over to advanced and you would be able to do a drill down and we're going to do that in the demo so you'll see more of that later also you have your data tab you know you can add a bunch of different data sources um, which i'll also go over later and explain you know what's available to you and how you do it and whatnot um at the bottom just some designer buttons you know zoom in zoom out roller units kind of just basic stuff there so the active reports web designer it allows end users to create ad hoc reports in their browsers supports page semantic and rdl report design there's no need to compile and redistribute your product to change your reports um, and you know it's really easy to use your end designers are going to thank you for this and developers um, so just some you know key features of our of our web designer um, allows for drill down reports again i'll get into the demo later um, it has an sql query builder and i put this in a link so after the webinar you guys can download this powerpoint and you can click on any of these links go to the documentation and learn a little bit more about it um, we got multiple export filters HTML, PDF, text, RTF, Excel, TIFF, and then a wide variety of data sources. So we got, you know, Microsoft SQL Client Provider, CSV, JSON, XML, ODBC, and a few others here. Um, a lot of options for you. So let's just get into the uh, demo here. Give me a second. All right, so here we are. It's a blank report, nothing on it yet. Um, what I'm gonna do is I already have a few samples here. We're gonna open up list. And if we click this and we go over here, as you can see, we are using JSON data for this. Um, second, all right. We have an action button right here. Um, this will allow you to do that drill down report. Um, you have your jump to report, which is what we'll be doing. You have your jump to bookmark. So say you wanted to take this URL, you could put it right in here, or sorry, you would do that with your URL, put that URL right in there. And then um, the string in this text box, when they click it, it'll jump to that URL. And again, these are the advanced features that I was talking about. I'll show you the basic that they would be able to see in a second. So as you can see, very basic features that if they wanted to, they didn't have to mess with the advanced features. So let's preview this really quick just so you guys can see before we do the drill down report. So it's just a list of, you know, some names, last name, title, two pages worth. Um, up here, we have a display view. We got a gallery view. You already seen the single view, which was the first view and a continuous view that'll scroll continuously um, you can download these different download options here for you print refresh all that good stuff all right so now let's actually jump to report again this is a drill down demo and let's say you have your employees you have a list of your employees and you kind of you know want to measure performance maybe so you have a performance analysis chart you know reports that you made uh, you'll click this you can pass parameters to it if you want to for the sake of simplicity we are not going to go in here and now you can see that the string for the first name you can click on these reports so we'll go to nancy and it opens up that report um, again you have you know your download and everything and you can go back to parent and it's back in the parent forward back to your drill down report 
same with that group. All right, so that kind of uh, wraps up the demo that I want to show you. I just want to show you how easy it is to create a drill, a drill down report with the designer. Let me go back here. All right, so Evan, Mateen, to wrap things up, you know, we went over configuring NuGet packages, converting reports, using NPM to install and embed uh, the report designer, intro to using the report designer and a drill down demo, um, and then some report delivery options, which was like the, um, you know, TIFF, uh, Excel, and other options that I listed earlier. So some next steps. Um, we're gonna send you guys a short post-session survey. If you could fill that out, give it back to us, that would be great. It'd help us out, you know, just kind of see what people are asking or any questions you may have and how we're doing. Um, if you don't have Active Reports 14 right now, if you haven't tried our product or if you have an older version, if you go to this link right here, you get a, for a free 30-day trial uh, upon downloading. So we got customized demos. Say, you know, you have uh, an in-depth question that we might not be able to answer on the fly. Um, request a demo and me and Evan will be glad to go extensively into the feature that you're looking at, you know, give you some samples, um, anything we can do to help you out with any question that you have. And kind of what ties into that is we have a support form um, where you can go, you can create a ticket, and then me and Evan and a few other technical engineers will also be able to answer any questions that you have. You can also mail any pricing questions to active report sales at grapecity.com. Um, also, we have a May promotion. So you can save up to 40% um, with the promo code ARMAY20 until May 31st. There is a link right here for this. It's on our pricing page. And then lastly, you know, stay in touch with us um, through the contact page. And our Twitter handle is right here at active reports.